All right, folks. Welcome back to Daily Blades. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not. I don't have a knife review for you. I just wanted to give a couple of minutes and kind of rant on about uh, you know China-made knives or Chinese-made knives, if you will. Uh, this is a very hot topic on a lot of the forums that I belong to on Facebook and some of the knife groups I belong to online. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to give it my thoughts on it a few minutes. Um, first off, I want to say right off the bat that. I too prefer American made, you know, that's where I hail from is America. I too prefer American made knives. In most products I prefer American made, but I, I understand that the reality of it is in your day to day life and the vehicles that you drive, in the homes that you live in, all these different things, there you are surrounded by things that are imported into this country. Whether you realize it or not, it's just it's just part of life. We are very much integrated more than I think people would like to, to think or know. Um, but I, in my knives, I still gen to, gen, generally feel more of a sense of pride. Blue. Got my hound dog back there whining a little bit. But uh, I tend to feel more pride in carrying, owning, and purchasing my American made knives. I generally carry an American made knife, you know, 9 out of 10 over any of the Chinese made knives. And even some of the higher end Chinese knives, I still don't own a whole lot of them. I mean, there's a few more than these. You know, I got, you know, Spider Co's, a Wii, a Kaiser, a Reed. I have a few more than that, but outside of that, I really don't own a bunch of the higher end Chinese imports. Um, I tend to be very critical on them and uh, if they make the cut I keep them if they don't I get rid of them um, take that for what it is I guess but the American made stuff I tend to keep hold up excuse me hold on to a lot longer or keep forever and I tend to carry them a little bit more that's just a sense of, of, of pride I guess in owning those and carrying those and using those knives and buying those knives and helping support your your country with that said though I will not limit myself to only that if I see something of quality that it, whether it's mass produced whether it's um, you know a small knife maker that hails from different countries you know China wherever I'll still appreciate that product give it a try give it my honest opinions and and you know then go from there um, but basically this video I just want to hit on there is a huge difference between Chinese made knives and a China made knife and I know that sounds like exactly the same thing and it kind of is but I think we've all been to flea markets we've all been to the checkout lines at uh, auto parts store or uh, a home improvement store like Home Depot Menards things like that and you see the Chinese made knives with the brands um, DeWalt on them or Snap-on or you know Colts or whoever and they're just using that name to help sell that product and nine times out of ten those knives are just terrible terrible cheap imitation knockoff knives that don't hold together that screws back out the blade steel soft the, the locks bend just uh, you know horrible 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 I think we've all dealt with them seen them felt them whatever the case may be with that said, I always look at China-made knives or Chinese knives, and there's kind of tiers. So you have that lower garbage line, then you've got mass-produced stuff like, you know, here's a, a TAC Force, I know there's MTAC, and, and there's people that swear by knives like this and, you know, like them and enjoy them and use them for what they are. Someone that owns one of these knives that carries this knife on a regular basis probably isn't going to carry or... or concern themselves very much with carrying an American made product or even a higher quality uh, Chinese made knife. So you know here I've got an array, I don't have none of the cheap cheap fall apart knives to show to you but I've got some of the more budget oriented like that TAC Force. This is a uh, Ozark Trail you know you get at Walmart for four bucks. This is one of their you know newer ones with the uh, I think it's aluminum handles I, I really haven't looked at this knife I just bought a few of them uh, to do some torture tests on them later on um, you've got you know here's another one of the Ozark Trail four dollar knives they are what they are here's a we were in Tennessee and my daughter saw this little uh, OTF double action that she wanted to get I think she was like eight or nine at the time so you know let her get it uh, here's another little Chinese made stiletto auto thick as hell weighs a ton feels like a brick 
just cheap stuff. But then you get into this next tier of Chinese made knives. And these are Chinese made knives that are made for American designers, for American companies, or they still could be foreign companies, but they still ca they care a little bit more. And what I mean by that is, you know, so for instance, we talk about Spyderco. Spyderco is obviously an American, um, you know, company. Right here's a Tenacious on the table. That's a Chinese made Spyderco, and I. I couldn't even imagine how many of these they've sold over the years. Uh, here is a bird, uh, Metal Arc 2. There you go, you can see the China logo on it. So, you know, this is a sub 20, I think it's about $15. You know, Lockback, you know, 8CR13 MOV, very basic blade steel, but good solid lockup, good budget user knife, you know, and it hails from China. Then you get into these Chinese made knives that are made for companies like CRKT. So here you've got, you know, the Robert Carter, um, the little jettison, you know, titanium handles and stuff. Cool little knife, you know, and you might not be able to, you know, get a American, you know, custom from Robert Carter. So it's nice that they partner. Here is the CRKT Pilar, Jesper Vox knives. This is a hot little knife right now. Very good, a little heavy, but very good small EDC knife. There's a shuffle, and you know, here's a hinderer design um, cryo. So, Kershaw cryo. You know, and like with hinderer, if you said, okay, well I prefer to have his American made stuff, and even if you just looked at zero tolerance line, you're gonna be spending, you know, a couple hundred bucks versus, you know, $30 to have his design. So I do think there is a place in the knife world for manufacturers to maybe outsource some of the knives that are designs that people want but necessarily maybe necessarily can't afford the full-on customs or the, the American made counterpart so there is a spot for those knives is basically my point you have to keep in mind too when we get into some of these higher-end knives um, these are people that are skilled, they have computer training, they understand how CAD works, they understand quality, fit, finish, they understand the materials that they're being used, and honestly, I really feel like they're building these for outsourcing, for the American market. I can't imagine there's too many of them over there, let's say in China, that carry a lot of David Dang's REIT knives. I could be completely wrong on that. I'm not an expert. But I just feel like they are definitely developed and made to be sent out of that country and sold elsewhere uh, to people that appreciate the quality and the craftsmanship and the materials being used. You got to keep in mind as well, uh, you know, China has been making knives and cutlery for a very long time. They have found daggers and swords going all the way back to the Shang Dynasty, which is, I believe, like 15, 1600 BC. So they literally have thousands of years of making cutlery. So it's nothing new to that country as far as making blades and knives. But there is a big difference, again, in, you know, the budget, flea market, mass produced stuff to the um, factory produced you know for american companies to be able to get designs uh in the hands of people who want to own a, a prime or a hinderer or whatever the case may be and they're doing it at an affordable you know price point and i believe that that's a valid reason to be doing it and then you've got companies like we and reed and kaiser that are really just taking a cut above and they really are producing some knives that are extremely well made, they're well thought out, they're planned, not every model, you know, some of them I feel like they've rushed, especially this company, We, but uh, they really know what they're doing, they really take their time, and they're trying to produce something that's extremely competitive for the materials, uh, you know, they're using, and uh, just overall quality and fit and finish. Now... I guess the reason why I made this video, like I said, was because I belong to the groups and we see a lot of the, the bashing of the Chinese made knives. And quite often, someone will ask a question about Reet or Kaiser, and they'll say, well, I won't buy it because it's China made. And to me, I think that that's not fair to some of these designers that work hard. Uh, you know, I would, <laughs> I gotta say that Todd Begg would, would, would completely disagree with a lot of you because his Steelcraft line is made by Reet. So obviously he understands that they are producing stuff of quality 
with good machining, with good fit and finish, and they pay attention to the details. And if he's willing to trust in them, I guess my point is I wish a few more of us would trust in them. I'm not saying rush out and spend your money on, uh, you know, your hard-earned money on, on, you know, stuff, foreign-made products. And, and I completely understand if you only want to buy American. But I'm just saying I hope people start to understand that there is quality over there. There's been quality over there for a very long time. And it's not fair to lump some of them in with the lower tier. A lot of the reason why is, you know, us as Americans look at China-made stuff and consider it garbage is because of our importers. Our importers choose to get the cheapest stuff they can that has a better profit margin and then flood our markets with the garbage. And that's why we associate everything with garbage. I can assure you, I, I may not be a very well-traveled person. But I know quite a bit, I've met quite a few different people, and I know a lot of people that travel and go to these countries, and they always come back amazed at the stuff that they have that they didn't think they had because of our mentality here. And really, it comes down to we're limited to seeing what the people that import stuff from these countries to us, that's what we see, that's what we associate, that's what we think it all is. And that's just simply not the case, especially anymore with some of these Chinese produced higher end knives. So with that said, am I going to rush out and spend a ton of money on, uh, you know, Chinese made, made knives? No, I'm not going to. I'm going to still very carefully choose and pick, you know, like for this, for this one, you know, this is a Conway, uh, design, you know, sheepdog. And, uh, it's a knife that I really, really like, and I wanted one of his full on customs and stuff. And, you know, eventually their books close or the prices just get secondhand market, just get out of control. And it becomes something that I won't say is not obtainable for me, but it's something that becomes less desirable because I really can't see or justify spending that amount on it. So for me, I'm thankful that he did this collaboration with Kaiser. I actually personally don't like a whole lot of Kaisers. I had some bad experiences with early Kaisers. I will say in the last year or two, the quality of the knives have, have improved vastly. But, uh, you know, when he did this collaboration, I mean, I knew right away I was going to be getting one and I'd give it a shot and then see if I liked it or not. So I guess, I guess the point of the video is, you know, all Chinese made knives are not junk. So when you get on a forum or you go to YouTube and you look for a review and you find the people that are just straight bash it because of the nationality of the knife designer or where it's made... I really don't think that's fair. You really have to look into each individual company, each individual manufacturer or maker, and then get the information you know, segregated to that specific item or brand that you're looking at. Because there's a very big difference between this Wii 606 and this TAC Force. Yeah, they're both made in China. So if we take them all, everything else away, and we lump these together, we just say, you know, well, they're both made in China, so they're both junk. And to me, that's simply just not the case. And I really don't know what else to say on the subject. It's just something I wanted to hit on just because I really get not offended. I just get tired of seeing the knife bashing when I know there are manufacturers over there that really work hard to produce something that will be liked by the world now. Hey guys, I just wanted to add in while we're on the subject of Chinese made knives. I, I forgot to mention it in the video, so I'm just adding this in. Um, I wanted to hit on China clones real quick. I know that there's a lot of YouTube channels and people that have great success in reviewing uh, the clone knives. I know there's a lot of people that buy them, and I understand why they buy them. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're looking at like a Borka Stitch, which is like a $3,500, you know, potentially $3,500 folding knife or whatever, and you could buy a clone for under $100, um, yeah, I get it. You know, if you want that look, that appeal, and they do a pretty good job mimicking the looks or the aesthetics of the knife, but in reality is you have no idea what the materials are that you're purchasing. And in reality, you're you know helping someone that stole uh, from someone that may have spent hundreds of hours in development and designing a knife. 
So I really don't support the clones. I, I've handled a few, I've felt a few, but I don't buy them, I don't talk about them, and I, you won't see them on my channel. And does it mean that I'm telling you, hey, don't buy them? No, because I would never tell you anyone how to spend their money or, or what you know they should be deemed as something valuable and, or what's not valuable, because tastes vary wildly. But uh, just as for me, I, I won't buy them. And as a quick uh, hit on that, I was up in Michigan last year. There's a big gun and knife show up in, in uh, northern Michigan. And there was a gentleman, he had uh, two tables set up, and one in the display case was all these microtechs and stuff. The other one had microtechs in it. And I really didn't understand, so we started talking. He goes, Well, those are clones over there, and these aren't. And he wanted 200 for the clones and 350 for the knot. The, the 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 originals and they were like Halo fours if I remember or fives and I'm sitting there thinking it's still so cheap they're probably all just clones and even though he had some cool knives in his table that I did want to buy because he had them there I couldn't trust them I had no clue and that's another sad thing too is that a lot of these manufacturers over there now are starting to clone production knives so like you got to be careful when you're buying even a zero tolerance anymore second hand you really have to know what you're looking at. Uh, because you can get burned and so that's a very very sad thing uh, about the clones in my opinion so take that for what it is uh, again if you buy them I have no problem with that I support anyone that carries a knife in their pocket I mean I, I love cutlery I've been carrying pocket knives for since I was just a little kid so uh, love knives but I don't personally buy them and I won't review them or talk about them but because this is about China made knives I felt like it just deserved a couple of minutes to hit on it alright guys so I hope you enjoyed the video again take care have a great day